Okay, so let us see the status of our outer planet probes. We've got the Elu Clipper in orbit around Elu waiting for landing. We've got the Jewel Clipper 1 in orbit around Lathe waiting for landing. We've got Jewel Clipper 2 coming into the Jewel system in 44 days. And then there's a Tylo encounter, though I wasn't really planning on bringing it to Tylo because we've got a Bop and Paul contract to do. We've got a Drez Clipper that is returning from Drez and will be making its mid-course plane change in order to hit Kerbin in 22 days. So the Drez Clipper is the first thing and so we are going to turn to that. So if all goes well this should be the final maneuver before reaching Kerbin's SOI for this and in that case it will be returning to Kerbin successfully bringing back some science. How much science do we have in here? Review data. We've got 120 there. Keep that data. And one of the that not that one. This one has uh, 42. Keep that data. And we didn't uh, get a barometer reading because that doesn't happen on on uh, Drez and log temperature now would overwrite. Okay, so you know we're looking about 200 signs from this one and there is one contract that we are going to be fulfilling. Okay, I have to remind myself about what's going on here after doing all these missions. Okay, it's not really a mid-course plane change, it's just a mid-course adjustment burn and it's 231 meters per second. Here we go. And the goal here is to hit Kerbin at the ascending node with it because we don't want to do a plane change adjustment which would cost a lot more and we don't have fuel for that. We've got Kerbin SOI. We just need to get close to Kerbin so that we can error break. That's as close as that's gonna get us. That's crashing into Kerbin. That'll do fine. Okay, so the Dress Clipper is returning to Kerbin, and uh, we'll see whether we really have to dump all this or not. Probably we will, though. There's only one parachute. I don't know how quick it'll be coming down with uh, only one parachute to bear the mass. What's the mass of this? 1.77. That that parachute was really only meant for 0.84 or so. That's the mass of the capsule, the Mark 1 pod. Anyway, this one is uh, good to go, which means that we should focus on Jewel Clipper 2. Bringing Jewel Clipper 2 into the Jewel system, we see that the situation is well, we're, we're going around in the correct direction. That's a positive. And I think it's being really nasty to us. It shows us this Tylo periapsis. It's not really taking into account the fact that we're going to crash into Jewel. So that's not very nice of this whole system. Let's, uh, let's fix that. If it'll let us create a maneuver node. Always tough. There we go. Okay, now we have a dual periapsis. Yeah, that's that's good enough. We got it to 110 kilometers. We'll fine tune it as we get in. Um, let's wait a few days, and then I'll plug in the numbers into air braking calculator to get a better look at it. Looks like uh, we're we're entering at a pretty good inclination as it is. Okay, so it says that if I want to keep my my apoapsis at around the altitude of Paul, which I'm going for 200,000 kilometers, I'm saying, then I need to air break at 125 kilometers in Joule's atmosphere. So let's make that adjustment. So I want 125 instead of where we are right now to keep the whole thing loose enough so that we hit the right apoapsis. Obviously uh, 
the lower we go, the tighter it will be. I think I'm gonna go with that. Point one. Ah, well, we better wait for this one, otherwise there's no way I'm gonna make it accurately enough. Okay, I'm gonna take 124. And that will be good enough. I'm not gonna waste a goo container. We've got Bob and Paul to take care of here. And I want to get surface readings on both of them. But we've also got to fulfill a contract for scientific data from space around Jewel. Maybe I'll allow one goo container here. Okay, we're gonna have to... Well, I'll keep it for now and then transmit it. Not burning too much of our velocity off. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be enough. And it is. Ooh, that inclination is not what I was bargaining for. Oh, it's it's because of Tylo. Tylo is uh, knocking us into a weird inclination. Okay, well, we can try to avoid Tylo. We don't have enough science on board in order to do anything with Tylo. Well, Tylo's pretty persistent, isn't it? Wow, it keeps us going all the way through all that. Huh. Best thing to do is just to encounter it at a good altitude, a uh, good inclination. Let's let's say I I actually target Tylo. And where is my ascending node with it? Oh, right here. Okay. Let's say in a few minutes. Not right here, though. Okay, this is the only way I can figure out how to solve this Tylo problem and get us into a decent orbit for Paul. Not a very decent orbit for... for Bop, but one thing at a time. Okay, now we can log temperature. Let's transmit that so that we get that contract fulfilled. Yes. All right, good job, everybody. Let's do this burn. Okay, now I have to hope that this is really what Tyler's gonna do to me and not some sort of messed up plan on its part. Gonna reset this uh, goo container. It'll be easy enough to get uh, jewel reading with goo later on. It's tougher to get uh, the ones on the surface of Bob and Paul. Nope, oh, up oh, oh, electric charge. Let's extend those puppies out. Still, Jewel is getting in the way. Probably turn off the lights right now. Just in case. Oh, oh, oh Tylo is... Tylo's messing with me. Tylo is being mean. Uh, that's what I'm worried about right there. Now, if we encounter Tylo soon, that means that's not the one we're going to get. If we encounter Tylo later... Okay, so this, this is the good one. Now, let's see if Tylo can help us get the right... Okay, let's focus on Tylo. And I want to try and get the right inclination with respect to Paul. I think that's 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 a good bet right there. And I'll just correct the inclination as we go forward. Okay. So I'm going to do this burn. And there we go. Paul periapsis with that uh, plane change in the middle there. But for now we are still in Tylo's sphere of influence. There's Tylo. 
So, perhaps as we swing by, a temperature scan will be possible? I don't know. Again, saving the really heavy science stuff for the surface of Mall and Pop, Bop and Paul. <laughs> okay, uh, temperature scan can't be done. And, and Tile doesn't have an atmosphere, so okay, the pressure scan is probably impossible. Alright. Okay, I'll do the change here. We're still on this stage, thankfully, so the hope that this stage would handle all of the maneuvers in the dual system seems to be working out. Okay, uh, 194 kilometers. It seems like a reasonable Paul periapsis. Seven days, though. Uh, let me just go out to the Space Center and check on the timing of the DREZ mission. Okay, we've got 57 days until the DREZ mission enters Kerbin SOI, so the seven days that it takes for this one to get to Paul shouldn't be too bad. Let's go. Unfortunately, the adjustment we need to match orbits with Paul might be a little bit tricky. Let's see now. If we wanted to get into orbit, what would it cost us? That's a good enough orbit for this situation. Uh, 700 looks like. Alright, well, if that's what it costs, that's what it costs. We need to get to the surface of this thing. Oh, we need to do... Uh, Achieve orbit, science from space, and then science from the surface. Might be that the goo has to be the space one, because we'll be doing the temperature scan on the surface, probably. Okay. We are on the lander stage. So we want to be on the bright side and somewhat equatorial. I think uh, this area looks like the right place. Let's take care of the space reading. Uh, I'll save the temperature scan for the surface. Let's do the mystery goo here. Okay, well, we'll have to transmit. I think at the end of these missions, even though I was trying to aim for science, I'm going to end up with more funds than I got science again. I'm going to end up uh, net plus on funds, but not quite as far along on science as I would have liked. Perhaps past this highland here, right in this valley. Yeah. the mountains of Paul. Okay, there's that valley. Yeah. I don't know about retro burning too quickly here. also don't know if it's really a good idea to land in that valley. It looks a little bit steep. But so does everything else around here. Oh boy, this is quite a slope here.
Okay, we are down. Uh, sort of. Uh, have we landed? You tell me. Okay, contract says we've landed. All right, log pressure data can't be done. Temperature scan. Okay, transmit that. Okay. So we've fulfilled the Paul contract. Now, do I do a goo container on the surface here? Do I do a science junior on the surface here? Or do I save both of those for Bob? Uh, I think I'm going to have to save both of those for Bob, even though Bob is going to be a pain. Remember, it uh, killed one of my Kerbals in my other series, in my 0.24 series, the Efficient Design series. So I have a grudge against Bob now. But I'll, I'll save the signs for Bob. Seems like it's a somewhat tougher place to go. Yep, okay. We may take off now. And yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just need a nice little orbit for now. Nothing too fancy. Okay. So there we are in orbit around Paul. And now I am actually going to wait for the proper phase angle for transfer between Paul and Bob. Perhaps. Let me take a look at what the angle is. Okay, I get 303 on that particular calculation, and that means negative 60, which means Bob needs to be 60 behind Paul, which should be doable. Let's see. Okay, I think I've waited long enough. Let me let me give it a go. It's less than, it's less than, I mean, it's more than 60 degrees, but let, let's see how far off it is. Even 1,463 kilometers away from Bop, it's not going to capture us. Very antisocial sort of moon. Okay, I'll just go with that. So, it costs a bit more, but... I am impatient, and we are in a tight orbit, and I don't want to go back to the tracking station to tie more at full speed. So, on we go. Probably won't jeopardize a uh, Bop landing. Okay, Bop periapsis, 1,015 kilometers. It's saying we have an encounter for, well, for a whole hour actually, amazingly enough. Let's, let's go and find out what this whole Bop thing is about and see if it will eat my craft on landing. Okay, it looks like orbit will cost us about 260 meters per second, which is not bad at all. And of course, that's because the difference between Paul's orbit and Bob's orbit is not that much. Uh, if we were coming in from just after Joule capture, it'd be a lot more because the difference between that orbit and Bob's orbit would be much more. Well, there's Joule. Oh, there's Bob. Okay. Thirty kilometer periapsis. Apoapsis, of course, is still quite high. We'll have to pull it down. That'll cost a little bit more. So let's uh, go around and get this thing a little bit closer to its target. Let's see about that science in space around Bob, huh? Will it let me do a temperature scan? The which I constantly want to scratch. Nope. All right, well then let's do a mystery goo observation here. Transmit that. Yep. Okay, did that successfully. And what I want to do is a landing. And doesn't particularly matter where so at periapsis, I'm going to lower the orbit down to 
a uh, full descent orbit. Looks like we're clearing everything. Then the, this this shadowy terrain. Okay, we now have a descent path to our landing site. Here. We'll have to wait a little bit. We need to pass Sapoapsis here. Alright, we are on final descent as you can see. Coming in pretty quickly. Don't have downward facing lights of course. Not something that this design has. Okay, it's been a remarkable descent so far. I haven't even had to touch the throttle. Basically I left it at uh, this level and it's just been trickling all the way down. Yeah, that was uh, amazingly perfect. Got some horizontal velocity here, but not much. Okay, we have contact and the engine is off. It says we've landed on BOP. Let's do the Science Junior. Okay. Do we have enough fuel to get back? Hold on. Let's keep this data for now. Do we have another experiment to do that we could transmit so that we can fulfill the contract at least? We can log temperature. Let's transmit that. Can we do a barometer reading? No. Ah, <sighs> that barometer. Okay, we fulfilled the contract and I'm keeping the Science Junior and I'm going to test whether we can get back. So, 180 Science if we can. And now I'm going to get back into orbit around Bob before it swallows us. Okay, we have a nice stable orbit around Bop. And so I can turn to check on other things. First of all, let's see what the delta V of this little guy is right now. Calculator's out. 1981. That's pretty good. But not sure if it's enough to come back from Jewel though. What I really need to do right now is check on whether we've got a contract for Leif and Elu because we're about to land on those two. We'll, we'll let this hang out for a little while, but I want to check on the contract skin. Okay, taking a look at our options, it's uh, they're not good. Um, when you look at it, uh, they've got Explore, Tylo and Explore, Val, the two moons that we weren't visiting in the dual system this time around. Science data from space around Tylo, thank you very much. Uh, plant a flag on Lathe. <laughs> which obviously we're not going to be doing. So yeah, and otherwise other things. Lots of plant a flag suddenly. Those weren't even popping up. Well, I guess I might as well uh, pick them up. I, I do intend to do some of these. And uh, might as well for funds. Um, that's, that's trivial now. That's also trivial now. Plant a flag on Leif might be a little bit tricky. I'll, I'll accept the, well, the reputation hit might be a little bit harsh. Maybe the, the hit to, the hit to the budget isn't too bad. The hit to reputation, I don't know what e that even means actually on this scale. I'll leave that be. I'll take this one. That's got to happen sometime. Okay, this doesn't expire ever. That seems pretty solid, and we'll we'll pick up Val as well. But uh, nothing to do with uh, what we're on right now with the with the Lathe and Elu landings. But we've got some new contracts, so that's important. All right, uh, let's take a look at the Lathe mission.
There just isn't very much for us to aim for, is there? I guess that's the best bet. I don't know how fast is well, uh, Leif, Leif. Uh, yeah, Leif might uh, revolve fast enough for that not to be a possibility. Let's see. I'll plot at uh, periapsis or close to it, some sort of descent path. Okay, let's say 33 kilometers. Trying to hit this piece here. That's tough. Well, that might make it easier. Costs a lot though. That's not the best location to do an inclination change like that. Okay, let's see how this works out. Seems like we have our solar panels retracted. Probably for the best in this case. For those keeping track, uh, I think this is my... F I, it is not my first attempted lathe landing. But if this works, I think it's going to be my first successful one. And that's in quite a few hundred videos in Kerbal Space Program. Well, there are a lot of things I haven't done before. Okay, around here, if I want to really change my inclination, I better do it. And I want to hit the bulk of that landmass rather than... Uh, that's the end of that stage. Alright, let's let it go. Not really feeling it in terms of drag right now. You don't see any flame effects or anything like that. Let's go to surface speed. Okay, I think we're we're good to hit this landmass. Okay. I would have to transfer fuel at this point, but I'm going to let drag do the rest. And I am going to deploy parachute without decoupling. I don't intend to return this probe back. Oh no, this is some water here. I don't want to land on water. I wanted to land on land. Explicitly. Uh oh. I didn't notice that pond. I think it's gonna dunk me in that pond. Uh, might just pass it. In space near Leif, let's transmit that one. And now I want to log temperature. Transmit that one. Uh, come on. No, 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 no. Log temperature. Uh oh, we're we're coming down a little bit too fast, aren't we? And I forgot to transfer fuel. Uh. Whoa, whoa. Okay, good. All right, that's fine. Log pressure data. Transmit that. Get the goo container. Transmit that. Observe materials bay. Shame not uh, recovering it, but we're not going to be able to do that. We can't repack the chute right now anyway, so it can't be recovered on Kerbin. Transmit that. Uh-oh. get some solar panels out. Emergency, emergency. I have these, oh, these little solar panels providing emergency uh, power, but we're pushing it now. I don't believe all of the materials study 
update I was sent, but it's not going to let me click it now. Okay, now the question is, can we lift off and dunk ourselves in water? Oop, there's Jewel. Um, in order to get the data from there, at least the thermometer reading and barometer reading. I think we can. It depends on our current thrust to weight ratio, which I don't actually know off the top of my head. Uh, it's, a, it's a close call. Come on, in. Okay, um, what's our mass? Ah, it's too heavy. Well, I don't know, Leif's, Leif's gravity is less than Kerbin's, isn't it? And we could just burn off the, the fuel. Alright, uh, let me recharge fully first. Okay, and we're looking to head east, I believe. Whoa. Mm, no, west. West. Definitely west. Okay, the trick here is uh, we really can't use the parachute now. So we have to thrust... Uh-oh. I... Well, I'm gonna lose. Oh, the, those. Oh, well, too late. Got a long way to go, but I want to get to the ocean. I don't think we're gonna make it to the ocean. It's a lot farther than I thought it was. Maybe you should have gotten, uh, went for this pond here. Too late now. I don't know, we can see the ocean. Okay, let's see, how are we doing? Well, we're progressing somewhat. Okay, I better take that. Otherwise, I'm not going to have enough to make a soft landing. All we really can do is uh, thermometer and barometer now. But that's something. Here we go. The final act of this desperate probe is to do some science in the oceans of Leith. Okay, looks good, no flop. Thermometer. Transmit. Barometer. Transmit. Ugh, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, and that's that. That's Leif done. Now, Ilu. We're just chugging along here. No time to waste when there's science at stake. Okay, I like this path. Uh, we'll start a retro burn at periapsis to bring the orbit all the way down to a landing. Again, I'll have to do a fuel transfer of some sort. Up, 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 come on. Ilu has surprisingly high orbital speed. Actually, it's it's pretty pretty hefty, I guess. I mean, certainly compared to like the likes of uh, Bob and Paul, which we have also landed at in these missions to the other planets. Honestly, I think this is a perfectly good place. Well, there's a certain regularity to the surface, a little patchwork. Sort of reminds me of a little square farmland covered in snow.
Okay, here we go again. I'm certainly getting my landing practice in. Okay. The probe is down. The lander even. Observe the materials bay. From Elu's surface, we're not going to get back on this much fuel, so transmit that. It looks like both of our goo containers are already done. wonder how we managed that. Log pressure data can't be done, so all that's left is the temperature scan. Transmit. I must have been desperate for science to use both goo containers already. Okay. Alright, well, uh, this little guy's just going to sit here. And we've got our science. Uh, the next thing to do is bring back the Dres mission. Here we go with this mission, and we are looking at... Oh, it's either a crash course or we're barely in the SOI of Kerbin. Tough to tell. Okay, let's get into the SOI of Kerbin. No, actually we have a Kerbin periapsis of 50, uh, 17 kilometers. How about that? That sounds good enough to slow us down even though we're going to be approaching at extremely high velocities. But... I, I'm not satisfied with sounds like. Let's see now. I want to. I want to crash into Kerbin. I, I want to hit Kerbin decisively. There we go. Now we're hitting Kerbin. That's the ticket. Okay. Okay. We are going to be coming in fast. I don't want the parachute and decoupling the stage at the same time. I don't feel that we need any of this anymore. But maybe it'll soften the blow on landing? I guess maybe we can carry it with us, just retract the solar panels. We'll see whether it might help or hurt, depending on the mass. And the g-forces are going to be quite something. Yep, right to the top of the scale. Will it slow us down before we come crashing into the ground? I don't know. I don't know. I've never done a re-entry like this before. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, looks good, looks good. Um, I decided that we would uh, have the thing hang out for a sec, so... Okay, uh, yeah, all good. Parachute. Parachute. Okay, SAS off. Where are we? Basically, North Polish, huh? Close to North Pole. Question now is, what is the velocity of this going down, the descent velocity, once the parachute opens fully. And do I have to dump this stage or will it be able to use its thrust to slow us down so that it too will be recovered? Okay, 9 meters per second is a bit fast. I think 6 meters per second should be safe. All right, there we go, let's recover. All right, that little lander had 254 science on board and that boosts our total to 1,525. We've got, we got only 57.1% of the total value of the little lander back, but that was 7,700 
funds. Anyway, it made a lot more than that on its contract. Let's go to the tech tree. I'm aware that we still got a lander in orbit around Bob, but I think I'm going to have to finish things up here. Uh, in fact, this has probably already been three or four different episodes, I think. Probably. Uh, so, yeah, let's get some tech. Interesting that we can jump right to heavier rocketry without getting heavy rocketry. Let's do that. Let's defy all logic. In fact, let's get very heavy rocketry without getting heavy rocketry. I have plans, obviously. Um, advanced construction. Yeah, I think I need this. The claw I don't need yet. Protective nose cones. Wow, that's a hefty science amount for those. Not too sure that's worth it. I think I think I have to focus on science here. Let's get the gravioli. We haven't done anything with the gravioli. Let's in fact pick that up right away. And I'm also going to get heavy rocketry. Heck, it's just ridiculous that I get to get uh, these other two without getting this one first. Let's just be be fair about things. Pick up the skipper. These tanks. Mainsail. Big orange tank. No, big orange tank, yeah. I'll hold off on these for now. Well, these I can't afford now. I think uh, in the next episode we're going to be looking to how we can deploy the gravioli for maximal effect. Yep, uh, getting that around all over the place to get lots and lots of science. Okay. Alright then, uh, so this has been a rather successful series of missions. Again, we still have one extant, but I, I don't have the time to take care of it right now. So. We'll, we'll try and see if we can bring it back in the next episode, along with whatever gravioli shenanigans we can manage. Alright, uh, possibly deploying a gravioli probe on the, on the single stage to orbit space plane would be the best thing. So yes, uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series of missions to the outer planets. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.